who has been invited to address this august house. Thank you very much for this singular honor. In a short span of around a year, I am the third Pakistani leader to speak to the Azad Jammu and Kashmir Legislative Assembly. This shows our indissoluble bond with and concern for the Azad and Jammu Kashmir, its leadership, and its people. Mr. Speaker, the Kashmiri people are endowed with great qualities of head and heart. Over the course of centuries, they have left indelible marks in all spheres of life across South Asia. At the same time, they have suffered enormously from oppression, conflict, and violence. In 1846, they were sold in 75 lakh rupees by a colonial power to an enslaving ruler. Even today, on the other side of the line of control, millions of Kashmiri people are suffering from the unjust suppression of their legitimate aspiration by a manipulating occupier. Around a century ago, the poet of the East and a distinguished Kashmiri, Alama Muhammad Iqbal, lamented the oppression of the erstwhile Dogra rulers in a famous couplet. Aaj wo Kashmiri hai mehkoom majboor o fakir. Kal jise ahle nazar kehte te iran e sagheer. Even after the lapse of around a century, the situation of the Kashmiri people has not improved. Their majority is still oppressed, though the oppressors have changed names. Mr. Speaker, the Jammu and Kashmir dispute is one of the oldest unresolved international disputes. It has been on the agenda of the UN Security Council since 1948 under the Indian-Pakistan question. The UN Security Council resolution on Jammu and Kashmir affirmed the right of the Kashmiri people to self-determination. Regrettably, these resolutions have not been implemented during the last seven and a half decades. Instead, the current Indian government is bent upon consolidating its occupation of this internationally recognized disputed territory through a series of legislative and administrative measure. Contortions, convulsions, outright lies, and brutal use of indiscriminate force would be a more appropriate way of describing these reprehensible measures. Mr. Speaker, history cannot be undone. It was India that took the Jammu and Kashmir dispute to the United Nations. One of India's founding fathers and its first prime minister, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, is on record to assure the Kashmiri people multiple times of a plebiscite to determine their free will. In his letter of 21st November 1947, addressed to the Prime Minister of Pakistan, he categorically stated that Kashmiris should decide the question of accession by plebiscite or referendum under international auspices such as those of the United Nations. The subsequent Indian governments also acknowledged Jammu and Kashmir as a dispute. How can India's current leadership, Ranije, from these promises now? India must honor its long-standing and solemn commitment to the United Nations, to Pakistan, and above all, to the Kashmiri people. Regarding the plebiscite, the commitments under UN Security Council resolutions are sacrosanct and not affected by the limitations of time of space. Mr. Speaker, today I stand before you to reaffirm Pakistan's unwavering commitment to the Kashmiri people at this critical moment in the history of their struggle against foreign subjugation in their legitimate and freely chosen legislature. I'm here to express solidarity with them in the wake of a grave injustice. Three days ago, in a decision that was politically motivated rather than grounded in law, the Supreme Court of India validated the Indian government's illegal and unilateral measures of 5th August 2019. This unjust verdict was delivered by the apex court of the world's so-called largest democracy. 
In fact, the title of the world's largest democracy is a misnomer. Instead, India should be called the world's largest hypocrisy. Where hollow slogans of secularism, democracy, and diversity are raised to cover up caste-based societal operation, systematic intimidation, and marginalization of minorities. State-sponsored killings and terrorism and illegal occupation of people and territory. Ironically, the self-proclaimed largest democracy of the world is afraid of granting the democratic right of a plebiscite to ascertain the will of the Kashmiri people. Mr. Speaker, India's unilateral and illegal measure of 5th August 2019 and a series of subsequent steps have been aimed at changing the demographic structure and political landscape of the Indian illegal occupied Jammu and Kashmir. These measures constitute a flagrant violation of international law as well as the UN Security Council resolutions on Jammu and Kashmir. They remain a matter of grave concern as their ultimate goal is to convert the Kashmiris into a disempowered community in their own land. Deplorably, India's Supreme Court has endorsed these steps. Mr. Speaker, the successive Indian actions in illegal Indian occupied Jammu and Kashmir constitute a breach of the UN Charter, UN Security Council resolutions, and international law, including the Fourth Geneva Convention. Amongst others, the UN Security Council Resolution 122 of 1957, accepted by India, unambiguously declares that final disposition of the state of Jammu and Kashmir will be made in accordance with the will of the people expressed through the democratic method of a free and impartial plebiscite conducted under the auspices of the United Nations. The resolution further provides that any action by the erstwhile India-imposed Constituent Assembly of Jammu and Kashmir to determine the final shape and disposition of the state would not constitute a disposition of the state in accordance with the said principle. The Indian government's actions of 5th August 2019 endorsed by its Supreme Court are in a clear violation of these provisions. Evidently, India's administrative, political, and legal measures, including a series of sham elections, Article 370 of its constitution, abolition of this article in 2019, and now the Indian Supreme Court's verdict are mere tools to consolidate its occupation. Domestic legislation and judicial verdicts cannot absolve India of its international obligations under the UN Security Council resolutions. In the eyes of international law, any process subservient to the Indian Constitution cannot be invoked to determine the final status of Jammu and Kashmir. On the one hand, India has a grandiose vision of its place in the Committee of Nations. On the other, it impl implements a gross plot to subjugate foreign people and territories. It wishes to become a permanent member of the UN Security Council. However, its leadership takes pride in trampling upon international law and the UN Security Council resolutions. These contradictions reinforced by the ideology of Hindutva should serve as an eye opener for the international community. Mr. Speaker, it is an established fact that Jammu and Kashmir is an international dispute. The Indian government or its judiciary have no right to take unilateral measures against the will of other parties to the dispute, that is, the Kashmiri people and Pakistan. Now, verdict of any Indian court can stifle the aspirations of the Kashmir people. They had rejected India's illegal occupation in 1947. They also reject the actions of 5th August 2019. The judgment is politically motivated. This legal manipulation is an old tool in the hands of occupying powers, aimed at creating ground realities 
feigning hatred for popular support, and finally seeking legal validation through puppet courts. We and the Kashmiri people reject all this. Mr. Speaker, today in occupied Jammu and Kashmir, fear reigns, lives are extinguished, and rights are trampled upon with impunity. We condemn the consistent and premeditated assault on the demography of the Kashmiri people, the integrity of their land, and repeated attempts to rob them of their unique religious and cultural identity. Mr. Speaker, a Hindutva-driven leadership is bent upon devastating communities and perpetuating subjugation and occupation of Jammu and Kashmir. They are targeting defenseless Kashmiri men, women, and children. The dream of breaking the will of the brave Kashmiri people like many colonial rulers and radical occupiers throughout history. They are mistaken. The Kashmiris refuse to be enslaved. They have inscribed the crimson history of their resistance with their blood. Let me at this juncture pay homage to the early martyrs of the Kashmiri struggle, the tens of thousands valiant souls of Jammu. Their massacre in 1947 inspires our strong resolve in Pakistan to stand by our brethren in their just struggle. Mr. Speaker, during the last 34 years, more than 96,000 Kashmiris have been killed. Thousands of women have been subjugated to molestation and harassment. Pallet guns have been used as a weapon of mass blinding. Thousands of others have fallen victim to enforce disappearances. All these brutalities must end. The international community must hold the perpetrators of these excesses to account. These human rights abuses are well documented by a number of international bodies, including through two reports of the Office of the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights issued in 2018 and 19. Today I ask the world, when will its collective conscience awaken? For how long will the people of Kashmir continue to make sacrifices? For how long will their voices be muzzled? For how long will their leaders remain arbitrarily de detained? And for how long will they continue to suffer torture and extrajudicial executions? The state-sponsored terrorism must come to an end. Earlier this year, the office of all parties Hudiyat Conference in Srinagar was sealed. But can that flame in the hearts of Kashmiris be extinguished by confiscation or destruction of the structures of brick and mortar. The Indian authorities snatched the dead body of Sayyid Ali Gailani and did not allow his family to attend his funeral. Why were they afraid of a dead man? This brave man stood as tall as the Himalayas against the cruelty of Indian occupation. He lives in the heart of Kashmiris and continues to inspire their dream of freedom. A few months ago, the Indian authorities have sought the death penalty for Mr. Yasin Malik. Despite frail health, he continues to be dragged through sham trials and sentenced in politically motivated cases. Why does India want to stage his judicial murder, Mr. Speaker? Notwithstanding widespread human rights abuses, India has failed miserably to dampen the spirit of Kashmiri people. Generations after generations, their longing for freedom is as alive as it was seven and a half decades ago. I wish to remind the Indian leaders that unilateral steps in Jammu and Kashmir can neither accord legitimacy to their occupation nor suppress the true sentiments of the Kashmiri people. Gimmickry cannot replace legitimacy. The gerrymandering of electoral constituencies, issuance of domicile certificates to outsiders, and addition of temporary residents to the voters list are part of a well thought out strategy to alter 
Kashmir's demography and its political landscape. Pakistan and Kashmiris outrightly reject these illegal and unilateral steps. Mr. Speaker, India's charade of normalcy in Kashmir is a grotesque distro distortion. Militarization, censorship, and rampant abuses are the hallmarks of this brazen occupation. Normal areas do not need deployment of hundreds of thousands of armed troops. Normal areas neither remain under military siege, nor are governed by the president's rule and draconian laws. In normal areas, there are no unidentified graves or half-widows. In normal areas, people are free to travel abroad and journalists, both foreign as well as local, are free to travel and report. The occupied, the occupied Kashmir remains deprived of these signs of normal life. How could one claim that normalcy had returned to Kashmir? How can Kashmir develop in an environment of fear and intimidation? Mr. Speaker, Kashmir is Pakistan's jugular way. The word Pakistan is incomplete without Kashmir. The people of Pakistan and the people of Kashmir are bound by a unique affinity based on geographical proximity, shared history, and commonality of faith. We share joys and sorrows. Pakistan cannot remain indifferent to what happens in Jammu and Kashmir. It is a party to the dispute. Kashmir runs in our blood. That is why Jammu and Kashmir dispute remains an important facet of Pakistan's foreign policy. We are duty bound to play our role in the just and peaceful resolution of Jammu and Kashmir dispute in accordance with the UN Security Council resolutions and wishes of the Kashmiri people. Across the political divide, the entire Pakistani leadership stands united to support the Kashmiri people's just struggle for realization of their right to self-determination. Successive generations of Pakistani people have steadfastly supported the Kashmir cause. We shall continue to do so. Mr. Speaker, Pakistan has always wanted good neighborly relations with India. However, durable peace in South Asia remains contingent upon the settlement of Jammu and Kashmir dispute. We have consistently advocated constructive engagement and result-oriented dialogue to resolve all outstanding issues, including the core issue of Jammu and Kashmir. However, India's unabated hostility and retrogressive actions have vitiated the environment. The onus, therefore, remains on India to take the necessary steps to create an enabling environment, conducive for a meaningful and result-oriented dialogue. Mr. Speaker, any attempt to label the long-standing struggle of the Kashmiri people as terrorism is an egregious distortion of reality. It is vital to recognize the profound disparity between genuine aspiration of freedom and a blanket accusation of terrorism. These excuses, excuses must not serve as a pretax to delegitimize earning for self-determination among occupied people. Mr. Speaker, the Indian leaders are making a number of belligerent statements about Azad Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan. Only a few days ago, the Indian Home Minister staked a claim over Azad Jammu and Kashmir while addressing the Indian Parliament. Notwithstanding Indian military and political leaders' rhetoric, Pakistan has exercised maximum restraint. Let there be no misconception that Pakistan would yield to any form of threat or intimidation. We stand resilient in the face of challenges, holding firm to our principles and commitment to safeguarding our sovereignty and interest. Yet our real strength lies in our preservance, diplomacy, 
and commitment to dialogue, not in aggression or conflict. Above all, truth is on the side of the Kashmiris and Pakistan. Mr. Speaker, I appeal to all men and women of conscience to urge India to desist from taking unilateral steps to further consolidate its occupation of illegally Indian-occupied Jammu and Kashmir. Revoke its action of 5th August 2019 and the subsequent steps. Provide solemn assurance that it will not change the occupied territory's demographic composition and not allow non-Kashmiris to acquire property or residency in Jammu and Kashmir. Halt its egregious human rights violation. Repeal its draconian emergency laws and withdraw its heavy military presence from Kashmiri cities, towns, and villages. Provide unhindered access to UN, OIC, human rights organization, and international media to investigate and report on the situation in occupied Jammu and Kashmir. Implement fully the relevant UN Security Council resolutions and allow the Kashmiri people to freely exercise their right to self-determination through a UN-supervised plebiscite as was promised to them by India, Pakistan, and the international community. Mr. Speaker, before concluding my remarks, I salute the courage of the Kashmiri people and pay rich tribute to the martyrs. I owe my sincere sympathies to the population of Azad Kashmir, living close to the line of control, who have suffered enormous loss of life and property in the past due to India's aggressive and deliberate shelling. I want to reassure our Kashmiri brothers and sisters of Pakistan's steadfast moral, diplomatic, and political support. We have stood with them over the course of last seven and a half decades, and we shall continue to stand alongside them in their just struggle for realization of their right to self-determination. We genuinely wish that our kin across the line of control also enjoys the same rights and freedoms that are being enjoyed by the people on this side. First of all, I am thankful to you all for this Zad Afzai, who has given me the peace in this country. And from my own peace, Pakistan has been able to reach the peace in the peace of the peace of the peace of the peace. Pakistan is a leader. لیکن اس مقدمے میں اس کو اپنے آبا و اجداد کے حصے میں جو جائداد آئی ہے اس کا مقدمہ لڑ رہا ہے یہ میری اپنی زمین کا مقدمہ ہے یہ میرے اپنے لوگوں کا مقدمہ ہے میں صرف یہ عذر عرض کرتا چلوں کہ تین مرتبہ پاکستان پہ کشمیر کی وجہ سے جنگ توپی گئی جو ہم نے لڑی ہے اگر تیس مرتبہ پاکستان پہ یہ جنگ تھوپی جائے گی ہم تین سو مرتبہ لڑنے کے لئے تیار ہیں کسی کے ذہن میں کسی قسم کا کوئی خطشہ اگر ہے تو وہ دور کر لے وہ کشمیر میں بھی دور کر لے وہ پاکستان میں بھی دور کر لے اور وہ سری نگر اور بارہ مولا میں بھی دور کر لے میری فرس لائن آف ڈیفنس یہاں نہیں بیٹھی ہے میری فرس لائن آف ڈیفنس بارہ مولا اور سری نگر میں بیٹھی ہے جو اعزاز جو قربانی مقبوضہ کشمیر کے کشمیریوں نے دی ہے ہم صدیوں میں ان احسانات کو نہیں بلا سکتے ہم سب آپ کے مکروز ہیں ہماری آواز ہماری صدا سن لے کرزہ ہماری طرف ہے اور آپ کا ہے ان کی بچیاں ریپ کا سامنا کر رہی ہیں ان کے جوان انفورس ڈسپیئر ہو رہے ہیں وہ ہیں اصل لوگ وہ ہیں اصل مجاہد جب میں یہاں آپ کی باتیں سن رہا تھا تو مجھے شہید وانی نہ ادا رہے تھے جمہو کے شہداء سے لے کر یہ مشل راہ 
वानी जिस अंदाज में लेकर चले ये कश्मीर की आजादी के जामिन है पाकिस्तान अपने कोर इंटरेस्ट से कभी पीछे नहीं हटेगा हम बिल्कुल अमन चाहते हैं बट पीस विद जस्टिस वी कॉन्ट एंड वी डोंट वॉन्ट पीस विद इन जस्टिस एंड वी विल नॉट अलाउ टू स्टैब्लिश अ पीसफुल ऑर्डर बेस्ड ऑन इन जस्टिस प्रिंसिपल्स हमारी भी नजर है छत्तीसगढ़ से लेकर आसाम तक हम भी इन नारों पे और इन जो हिंदुत्व के आइडियोलॉग्स के व्यूज हैं कि पहले कसाई फिर ईसाई जो कुछ गोवा में होता है ईसाई दुनिया को उस पर नजर रखनी चाहिए आवाज उठानी चाहिए जिस अंदाज में रॉ की बेलिजरेंस वेस्टर्न एमोस्फेयर की तरफ जा रही है ये वेस्टर्न सिविलाइजेशन के लिए एक वेकअप कॉल है जागते हैं उनकी मर्जी नहीं जागते हैं उनकी मर्जी हमने तो इस नाथसी फैशिस्ट सोच का मुकाबला किया है सात दिहाइयों से हमारा हिंदू मजहब से न कोई झगड़ा है न हमारा हिंदू मजहब पे कोई इजारादारी कायम करना चाहते हैं हमारे पास अपने 20-30 फीसद सिंध के अंदर हिंदू पॉपुलेशन मौजूद है और वो एक रिस्पेक्टेबल पाकिस्तानी शहरी की हैसियत से हमारी सोसाइटी और रियासत में कंट्रीब्यूट करते हैं हमारा मसला हिंदुत्वा से है और इस खत्े की जंग इन पाकिस्तान लड़ेगा ये छोटी अकवाम की लड़ाई है ये मुख्तलिफ अध्यान की लड़ाई है ये डाइवर्सिफाइड ग्रुप्स की लड़ाई है 200 साल से इस खत्े के लोग लगे हुए हैं कि किसी न किसी शक्ल में रजिस्टेंस का सामना किया जाए रेजिस्टेंस के जरिए उसका ऑक्यूपेशन का सामना किया जाए इसमें कोई शक नहीं है ऑक्यूपायर की शक्ल बदलती रही है लेकिन कश्मीरों की सेंस ऑफ रेजिस्टेंस की कंटिन्यूशन रही है ये एक बाया और बाहमियत कौम है जब तक कश्मीर का इशू रिजॉल्व नहीं होगा तकमील पाकिस्तान हो ही नहीं सकता तखलीक पाकिस्तान हो चुका है तखलीक पाकिस्तान हुआ हुआ है सात दिहाइयां उसको गुजरी हुई हैं तकमील पाकिस्तान होने जा रहा है आप सबको ये यकीन दिलाता चलूं मैं आज हाजिर यहीं हुआ हूं और इसी वजह से हुआ हूं पाकिस्तान की चाहे फौजी क्यादत है पाकिस्तान की चाहे सियासी क्यादत है पाकिस्तान की इंटेलिजेंशिया है कोई भी ऐसा फर्द जिसका असर पॉलिसी मेकिंग में है उसके जहन में कोई कन्फ्यूजन नहीं है तजावीज़ के साथ आए आप लोग वेलकम हैं मैं खुद भी चंद तजावीज़ ज़रूर आपके सामने पेश करूँगा आपकी मशावरत से चलेंगे अपना मशवरा देंगे इसलिए देंगे कि ये नहीं कि आपका ये हम सब का मुश्तर का मसला है जो तजावीज़ आपकी तरफ से आएंगी मैं ऑन रिकॉर्ड लेकर पब्लिकली उसको ओन करूँगा कोशिश करेंगे इस लिमिटेड स्टेंट में जो भी खिदमत आजाद कश्मीर की कर सके वो इनशाला जरूर करेंगे जहां कोई कमी कोताही होगी उम्मीद करता हूं कि आप उसमें दरगुजर के जज्बे को सामने रखेंगे लेकिन मिलजुल के इस सफर को आगे बढ़ाएंगे जहां जहां इनशाला जितनी कंट्रीब्यूशन हो सकी वो कश्मीर की आजादी के हदफ को आ, उसको पहल देते हुए उसको प्रायोरिटी देते हुए और दूसरी सतह पे इसकी माली मालमत इसका इस्तेकाम इसका माशरती इस्तेकाम जहाँ जहाँ जो कंट्रीब्यूशन इन शाम से हो सकी वो वादा है कि आपके साथ इस सफ़र में रहेंगे पाकिस्तान जिंदाबाद कश्मीर पाइंदाबाद निगरान वजी अजम अनवरक काकड़ का कश्मीर कानून साज इसम्बली से खिताब आपने सुना उन्होंने कहा कि मसला कश्मीर अकवाम मुतहद का नामुकम्मल एजेंडा है मसला कश्मीर सात दिहाइयों से अकवाम मुतहद में हल तलब है निगरान वजी अजम ने कहा कि भारत मकबूजा कश्मीर पर नाजायज़ कानून साजी कर रहा है भारत मकबूजा कश्मीर के आवाम पर मजालम ढा रहा है मकबूजा कश्मीर के आवाम भारत के खिलाफ सफ आ रहा है 
وزیر اعظم نے کہا کہ بھارتی سپریم کورٹ کا کشمیر پر فیصلہ مزہ کا خیز ہے بھارتی سپریم کورٹ کا فیصلہ غیر قانونی اور غیر آئینی ہے